What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow. We've been covering all the biggest PC games to come out this holiday season. And today we finally have our full review in the latest entry of one of the biggest selling franchises around, Call of Duty Ghosts. Now Ghosts is from the same guys that did Modern Warfare 3 and it's supposed to bring a brand new plotline and style to the Call of Duty universe. Is it enough to bring a breath of fresh air into a series whose formula is beginning to grow stale? Let's find out. So to kick things off, let's talk about how the game looks before we jump into gameplay. And the short of it is, not very good. During development, it was said that this game emphasized achieving 60 frames per second across all systems it was playable on, rather than try to focus on making the settings or textures more detailed, and it shows. Running in our system, which includes a GTX 780 and an i7-4770K processor, during this scene on 2560 by 1440 with all the settings put to their highest, we got an average frames per second of 56.9. And when we put it down to 1920 by 1080, it shot up to 75.1. So it runs smooth, but the frame rates really aren't all that high considering how bland everything looks, and the game clearly wasn't optimized for PC in mind. Now on to actual gameplay. Now when it comes to a brand new Call of Duty game, one of the biggest questions is how many changes have they actually implemented, because oftentimes there really aren't that many. Well as far as core gameplay goes, the trend does not change with this one. There are some new features like scopes now showing your peripheral vision, as well as some maps now featuring a degree of destructible environments. There is of course the usual package as well of various tweaks to weapon balance, what perks there are, what killstreak wards are available, and so on and so forth. Now this one is part of the Infinity Ward series of Call of Duty games, so it has a lot more in common with Modern Warfare 3 than it does with Black Ops 2. So all of the bigger changes Black Ops 2 brought, like the pick 10 character setup, are gone. And in place are basically all the things we saw back in Modern Warfare 3. More restrictive equipment loadouts with so many perk points, and using one of three different styles of killstreak rewards focused on offensive or support packages, or just gaining additional perks as you get kills. What is different about the character setup is now you customize a whole squad of playable loadouts, giving you more options to choose from before a match. And this also plays into the game's new squads mode. Now before we start talking about all the different multiplayer modes, let's take a quick look at the game's campaign, which simply put is one of the weakest in the overall franchise. While all of the past game's stories have been more or less the equivalent to a crazy action movie, enjoyable less for their plot, more for just watching cool explosions and doing crazy things, Ghost has taken this dynamic a tad too far in one direction. Riddled with press button now to do cool things moments and a storyline that is more or less thrown together a combination of gigantic cliches, it's just gotten to the point where it doesn't do much to stand out amongst its own library. The only thing it did do that was pretty entertaining was the demonic mutant killing machine that people in game refer to as a dog. A monster capable of wiping whole squads of armed enemies by himself, and is even immune to tear gas for some reason. Sadly, he only really hangs out during the game's opening missions and promptly disappears from use after. Now as for multiplayer, this particular game comes with it in three different flavors. There's the traditional competitive multiplayer mode, the new cooperative extinction mode, and the more AI focused squad mode. Starting with the newest, we have extinction, more or less the Infinity Ward answer to Treyarch's popular zombies mode. Players work together to destroy alien items by protecting a drill, and in doing so, shoot a ton of alien monsters. Players start out with basic equipment, and as the game goes on, they can purchase new guns, make use of special perks like summoning turrets or ammo boxes, and there's even a pseudo class system that allows each player to get more specialized as the match goes on, like being better with guns or able to revive allies faster. As a co-op mode, it's a fun distraction, but it does little to compete with actual co-op focused games of the same genre. Alone it isn't enough to justify buying ghosts, but if you already plan to, then this is a fun little side game to kill time with every now and then. Next up we have the squads mode, which mixes actual players with AI controlled opponents, making it a much more lenient and controlled environment for players that want to try and learn the game, rather than jump into online right away and die every 5 seconds without understanding why. Modes include competitive options like assaulting an enemy player's HQ, customized by picking a map and match type of their choice, or just pitting two players in their respective squads against each other in traditional team multiplayer modes. There's also cooperative options akin to Modern Warfare 3's survival mode, pitting players in their squads or actual human teammates against waves of AI soldiers. This is actually the one new feature I really like, because it walks a good line between being a tutorial and actual multiplayer. So playing it doesn't set you up with entirely unreal expectations of how online competitive modes go. Now last but not least, we have the traditional online multiplayer modes, which at its core is very much the same as previous games. Returning modes include Free For All, Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirmed, Infected, Search and Destroy, and Domination. There's also four new modes for public play. Search and Rescue, which is a variant of Kill Confirmed. Blitz, which is more focused on getting to a specific point alive without dying. 
Cranked, which rewards kills with more power, making it very momentum-based, and Hunted, in which players start with basic equipment and have to pick up new guns from airdrops. Aside from these new modes, little can honestly be said about what Ghost does differently from its predecessors. The core experience, especially when playing free-for-all or team deathmatch, is very much the same game, with a few new little tweaks like what killstreak packages are available and gun balance. As a result, this ends up more or less defining the whole Ghost experience and whether or not you should purchase it. It does little that actually changes the direction the series as a whole has been going, especially in comparison to Black Ops 2 which at least tried to do new things to the core game. Longtime series fans will find this just to be another yearly edition of their favorite franchise, with new modes and new maps to play in. On the other hand, people that have never been a fan of the series or outright despise it will find little here to sway their opinion. If you've always been on the fence about the series and actually want to give it a try, honestly I would rank this one as being not one of the strongest by any means, and there are better, older Call of Duty games to play first if you really want to try it out, especially the original Modern Warfare. Now that being said, if you're a fan of Call of Duty and you want to grab Ghosts for yourself, check out the link in the description for pricing and availability, and while you're down there, if if you enjoyed this review, please make sure to let us know by hitting that like button, we really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you become one, because we've got a lot of great PC content on the way, including our top 5 PC games of the year list. Call of Duty will probably not be on that. Until then, I'm Kevin, you've been watching Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you next time.